The beautiful thing about Kapaze is you can practice it anywhere. You don't need to be out in the rain amongst animals running around and it's windy. You know, you could be locked in lockdown in Melbourne or in Sydney or wherever else you are in the world, in your room. You can be sitting, standing. You can practice this. And this, this what it does to your body, it builds the muscle memory. It teaches you what muscles to tense, what muscles to relax, uh, what muscles to focus on. You know, if you want to start playing around with different, different grips, you can, you can start playing around with different grips or you can practice whatever's going on. You can feel it first and foremost in your kapaze and then you take it out. If you want to try, oh, is my elbow too high? Is it too low? Is it even? You figure these things out in kapaze without having an arrow loaded and you practice. And generally speaking, we start with a very light bow. So 15 pounds, 20 pounds, you can start very light. And what we do in our introduction program, we don't actually start with the bow itself. When we introduce kapaze, we introduce it, we have our custom made, we have our custom made uh, therabands, resistance bands. So we start off with this very light, very, very easy. Yeah? We just start off very light, very, very easy. And we can do our kapaze. We can just come, to, come back, come back, right? And we can feel, oh, I'm a bit tight here. It's, oh, I need to loosen up. Doesn't matter, we'll focus kapaze. How many times did the Mujahideen do it? I don't know, I've told 600, 6,000. Point is that they did it a lot. As Muslims, an easy way to incorporate kapaze and the way that we were told the Mujahideen or the Ottoman warriors would do it was they'd have a very light bow next to them, next to them in their salat. And so after they finish praying, you know, we have to say Subhanallah, 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 huh? Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. And then you do that a hundred times after every prayer, because 33, 33, 33. And that's a hundred, five times, you're getting your reps and your sets in. So we start off with kapaze, and this is kapaze, and it's raining, and I'm not wearing any waterproof clothing, I'm getting really wet. Um, so I might just end the episode there on kapaze, or if you like, doesn't matter, we're here, rain, hail, sunshine, let's talk about torba. So once you've established your kapaze with your with your instructor or by yourself on YouTube, whatever, you, you establish your kapaze, you keep practicing, you start feeling your muscles, you get relatively comfortable with, comfortable with your left and your right, we can start our shooting, we can start shooting our first arrows safely. And this is torba. Torba is the second level of archery. And this is, we call this torba is where we stand a one bow, one bow length, away from the target three to five meters fair enough yeah and we start shooting from here in torba we're trying to develop consistency accuracy and precision in terms of in terms of from a technical point of view but here is also where the pillars of your shooting cycle or the pillars of archery is established and here as well there are many there are many, there are, i guess there are many oh, i'm rushing i guess there are many mental and physical and spiritual lessons um, it is cold it is wet i don't want my phone to get wrecked too much so maybe we will stop this video here um, alhamdulillah maybe the animals were warning us you know they say the animals know we just had an earthquake here in melbourne a couple of days ago the animals know so inshallah i hope you enjoyed this video um, you know I'd advise in, in weather like this, you probably do something like that. Find, find a shelter, go sit under it, stay dry. She's got a kennel over there, but maybe this is a bit, this one's a little bit more comfortable. Or it's got some air. She can keep an eye on, on her sheep. But yeah, Jazakla Khair, everybody. Uh, we'll, we'll see you guys next time, inshallah.